welcome back to this series on how to build your own rock crawler, rock buggy, or rock bouncer. Today, um, I'm going to talk to you about some of the issues that you have to plan for before you start bending the tubes for the, uh, for the main part of the frame. So in episode one, I talked about materials and tools required to build your buggy. In episode two, I talked about the drivetrain and drivetrain placement before you start building your buggy. So now that we are almost ready to start uh, building a uh, bending tube, I wanted to dedicate one episode today uh, in regards to what are some of, the, some of the preliminary steps that you have to think about before you start bending some of the tube uh, for, the, uh, for the main frame. Uh, one of them is suspension. So uh, today I'm going to talk about some of the suspension preliminary design and I'm also going to talk a little bit about coolant lines. I mean, these are important because you have to think about these ahead of time in order to try to under, you know, plan accordingly when you start bending tube uh, tubes for the uh, uh, for the main frame. So, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, most importantly today is suspension. So, I have pretty much had off-road buggies with every single type of suspension, uh, whether being uh, leaf springs, uh, I've driven them off-road. I've also had five link, which comes stock on a Jeep TJ, and I've also had three link uh, with uh, uh, three links only, uh, and I've also had uh, radius arm uh, suspension, front suspension, and obviously I also had four link suspension. So I want to let you know that if you're building a rock buggy. I think it's really important that you choose the right type of uh, suspension uh, for your buggy and to me most importantly I am a big fan of four link suspensions and this is this is quite important because I think that you need to have as much strength as possible in the suspension and you need to you need to have everything uh, all the axles articulate properly and not have some really weird effects that some of the other types of suspension are going to cause I, I mean, I'm no expert in in designing and building off-road suspensions, but I'm just letting you know what has worked for me and what I personally like the best. So four-link suspension. So for four-link suspensions, you have several choices as well within these. The first one is you can have I, the, only the upper links triangulated and the bottom uh, two links uh, straight or parallel. You can have the opposite. You can have the lower ones triangulated and the upper ones straight. And to me, the ultimate, the ultimate is to have both uppers and lowers triangulated. So that's the best uh, design that I, I personally would go with. Also, what I like a lot also is to build some really beefy tabs. So I like to use 3 8 uh, plate for the, uh, for the suspension. And I also like to use 3 quarter inch bolts. I mean, it might be overkill. I've had bad luck with uh, 9 16 grade 8 and grade 9 bolts uh, breaking on my buggies in the past. So that's why I, I use for the uppers and lowers a 3 quarter inch. And some people like to use, uh, there's so many different kinds of uh, joints, uh, joint ends or hind joints that you could use for the suspension design. I decided to go with uh, a quarter, a one and a quarter inch. Uh, heim joints with uh, misalignment uh, spacers for three quarter inch bolts and they also come with jam nuts and uh, with a welding bung in order to weld a piece of DOM or DOM tubing uh, to make your links. So this has been my, this was my favorite and um, what I also wanted to do is as much as possible I wanted to have a double triangulated suspension and what I wanted also to do is to have exactly the same suspension from the from the back to the, and the end, the front end. So the front end and the back end, they exactly they have the same suspension design. So there's a four link calculator uh, online if you're interested in uh, looking it up and putting in some numbers. However, I want to let you know that I'm not a huge fan of these four link calculators. I mean, they look they look nice and on paper and everything's you know. Clear. You can see how your links from uh, from a top view, side view, etc., which I like. However, you have to understand that these um, four link car calculators are mostly built for people who do drag racing, meaning that they drive on a flat surface. And to them, this is much more important because it dictates really um, 
how how much torque is applied to the rear tires. For us, because we are off-roading all the time, the suspension geometry changes all the, all the time. However, there are some golden rules that I recommend that you follow for building a four-leg suspension. One of them is the separation between the uh, the upper links and the lower links at both uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the frame end and the axle end. So at the frame end, what I like to do is approximately, say, seven, eight inches of, uh, of vertical separation between the upper uh, links and the lower links on the frame end and up at the axle end. What I like is between, say, nine to 12. And I usually, I usually like to, to have approximately 75 inches, 75% uh, um, more vertical separation on the axle end than on the frame end. And why do I like to do that? Because the ultimate is th this vertical separation is going to dictate the amount of anti-squat uh, you have. So ultimately, if you have uh, uh, an anti-squat number of 100%, means when you accelerate the buggy on a flat surface, the back end of the buggy is not going to lift up, it's not going to lift down, it's going to stay straight. If you have lower than 100%, the buggy is going to squat down a little bit as you drive forward, and if you have over 100% is actually going to lift up as you drive forward. I, through trial and error, and I've had many different types of forward link suspensions, I like the 75% rule because it allows me to have a per between 75 to 100% anti-squat. And I really like that because it gives you a little bit extra uh, downward push on the rear tires, meaning that it will, it will, it will give you a little bit more grip. And I, I, I like that. This is my personal favorite. Obviously, you don't have to agree with me. You can pick whatever number you want. I mean, there's a million ways you can build a buggy. So I'm just letting you know what I have done. And as you can see uh, in the picture that I'm showing you, uh, this is how my four link front and rear, they look, uh, the front and rear are, are pretty much identical uh, from a top view. You can see that the, the lowers are triangulated, uh, very good triangulation. And the uppers are also somewhat triangulated. I tried to triangulate them as much as possible, but obviously I had the big, uh, you know, center section for the Rockwell differential, so I had I didn't have a whole lot of choice for the uppers, and this is the best that I could do. So, the other golden rule that I like to follow is I like to have at least one of the links, uh, the either the uppers or the lowers, have approximately, um, uh, say, 40 degrees of angle between the two links when you're looking uh, top view uh, at them. And this, what this allows you is if you get a really strong side hit on the tire, the joints and the suspension is going to take it much better if the, the, the larger the angle, the more that the joints are going to take some abuse uh, coming from side, uh, side loading. So this is what, uh, what I have uh, done for the links. And the third rule that I want to share with you is length length of the links and this is what's important this is why I'm doing this video here so the length of the links I have had long links and I've had short links and my personal favorite is to have somewhere in between so long links to me means something over 45 inches uh, long for the lower links and um, and short meaning it's less than 30 inches so what I decided is to use links that are approximately 38 to 40 inches long and you know to me honestly it doesn't matter the length difference between the uppers and the lowers uh i mean it's it's minimal minimal changes um, in my opinion uh, for the whole how the buggy behaves what i like to have is as much um, uh, i i try to outboard the uh the upper links on the frame i try to make them as far away as possible on the buggy frame and this will give me uh, lateral stability uh, without the need of having any anti-sway bars and I, I was able to get away with it my buggy's fairly stable off camera so uh, I decided to go with 38 to 40 inch uh, links and by knowing that this distance and the other other really nice thing I wanted to tell you about triangulating the lowers is if you triangulate the lowers uh, you, I actually had good luck of not having a whole lot of rocks hit them from the bottom and bend the links. If they were straight, then they would be more exposed because they are more to the sides. And I found when they are 
uh, actually uh, towards the inside of the buggy, they, they get hit by rocks less frequently. So this is uh, what I wanted to tell you today about the, uh, the suspension. And now that I know exactly how much uh, link, uh, length that I want, I can somewhat approximate looking at the chassis, uh, the, at the chassis table, how much, uh, where I'm going to start building uh, my, uh, the bends in the frame. And that, this is why I was actually doing this, uh, uh, this video today. So you can see uh, the, the, the uh, subframe of the chassis to me is one of the most important uh, structural uh, pieces of the buggy. And it's going to take a huge, tremendous amount of abuse. And even the, uh, uh, the cross braces too, the where you're going to mount the, uh, uh, anywhere that you're going to mount a suspension link is I overbuilt it. Like I put three eighths, three eighths uh, flat bar, and I also put uh, uh, gussets and braces, and I just make sure that I weld it fully. And I, because this is, I, I, you know, I've had bad luck, say, and I, I've seen myself cracks starting in the frame around that area. So you have to be very careful and build it in very as much, you know, as strong as you can build it. The other uh, really important consideration for you to think about is uh, is coolant lines too. So for coolant lines, what are you going to do? Like, are you interested in putting the radiator in the back, which I highly recommend. I highly recommend putting the radiator in the back because it removes a lot of the heat from the engine bay. It gives you more visibility and it's also nice, you know, it's it looks good too. Uh, from my point of view. So what I wanted to do is basically run the coolant line through the, uh, through the main frame. And that's why I kind of, you know, I kind of eyeball where am I going to bend the main frame in order to be able to uh, uh, reach the engine uh, coolant lines as well as the radiator coolant lines. So for the, for the radiator, I decided to buy the biggest radiator that I can, I can fit. It's a, uh, it's a huge radiator and I wanted to use a dual, uh, 16 inch fans because I didn't want to have any overheating issues and you know this is all by experience you know I, I've learned the hard way you know a small radiator and a small fan are not going to to cut it for a, for a big block but you might you might get away with it for a uh, smaller uh, engine so once again today this is what I wanted to tell you um, I also want to tell you that there are a million and one different ways of building your own buggy so do not you know, do not follow what I tell you to the to the latter. Just take it with a grain of salt. I mean, there's I mean, there's some wrong way of building a buggy, but I've seen in a lot of different ways where people build it and it works just perfectly fine. So I'm just letting you know what I have done and and what what in my experience works and what doesn't work. Uh, I highly recommend going with a four link because you are not going to regret it. Even though it might cost you a little bit more money, you're not going to regret it. Whether you go with coilovers or you go with air shocks or you go with, go with coilovers and bypass shocks, it's it's up to you. It depends on how much your budget is. You know, if you obviously if you're gonna go, you you can go with a trailer trailering arm uh, real suspension, and I've seen those work amazing. Uh, however, once again, it's how much are you willing to pay for all the components. And, you know, I, I built my buggy thinking that, you know, eventually in the future, if I want to upgrade um, to a bypass shocks on the back or in the front, I can still do it, you know, but uh, I also know that I have limitations. I'm running heavy axles, the, the rock wells. So, so I, you know, I, I know that I'm not going to be racing my buggy, but for somebody who's going to be racing it, you know, not recreational driving it, obviously there's, there are other considerations to take into account. All right, so that's it uh, for today. In the next couple of days, I try to I'll try to make another uh, video on how to, uh, to 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 build the subframe. Now that you know uh, some of the numbers for the link length and and, and you know by subtracting the uh, uh, the wheelbase, uh, you can decide uh, what is the size of the uh, of the main f the area where you're gonna have a skid plate underneath the buggy. That's basically what I wanted to talk about uh, today. For uh, another small kind of point, I want I forgot about last time in regards to uh, the, uh, the the length uh, the uh, wheelbase of the buggy. It's it's up to you. I just I told you that I chose 118 inches for mine, but I'll give you my opinion on what works and what doesn't work. If you don't have rear steer on your buggy. I highly recommend that 
you have between you know 108 to 113. To me, this would be the ideal wheelbase if you didn't have any, uh, and, you, and obviously if you're running about 42, 40 to 44 inch tire, to me this would be the perfect wheelbase. If you have a rear steer, then you can get away by going a little bit longer uh, because now with the rear steer you can maneuver through tight spots easier while giving you the extra uh, stability if you any extra you know uh, stability when you're trying to climb uh, steep hill climbs so that's why I went with rear steer with about 40 42 to 44 inch tire I would go with uh, 115 to 120 inch wheelbase that's it for today have a nice day and uh, please like subscribe and comment and you're welcome to ask me any questions that you like uh, that's it I'll see you guys in a couple of days